So there are a few people that have put up with me for almost all of Tales of <laughs> Cocktail, and uh, this is one of them, Chris Anna. Uh, Chris was in our very first Cocktail Apprentice class, which we're celebrating our 10th anniversary of the Cocktail Apprentice program. Right. Talking to one of our other OG apprentices, uh, there were 17 people in that class. Yeah. And this year we'll have 70 <laughs> apprentices, so pretty amazing. Um, but so thank you, Chris, for all your support over the years. Uh, Chris is gonna make my sentimental favorite drink and one that I always send people into the Frank 75 to get, which is a Sazerac, because you must have a well-made Sazerac for your first Sazerac. In our quest to preserve this classic cocktail, every year we honor uh, bars in town with what we call the Sazerac seal of approval, and we have our secret Sazerac sippers that go around right. and you know try drinks. If it's not made right, you're not gonna go back to it. Um, and as David Wanbridge says, it truly is history in a glass. Oh, yeah, so, you know, awesome. tell us a little bit about, you know, your, your thoughts on the Sazerac before you make this one. I, I agree. It totally embodies the city. You know, the, uh, <clears throat> the licorice absent or pastis lace around mm -hmm. whiskey, a little bit of sugar and our own bitters just tells the whole story. Uh, one of my favorite things is that all the Sazeracs are different. Yeah. I, I know that we have a very unique one here at the French 75 bar. Mm -hmm. That I'm very proud of uh, continuing, you know, the same the same style of making it before I started here up to 15 years, and then getting one at uh, another unique uh, place like Two Jacks in Paul Augustine's. Right. You know, I have a homework assignment for everybody who works at this bar is to go to actually see Paul Augustine's for Sazerac and McMillan for a Sazerac or a Ramos as well. We were actually joking around today that a bartender told me that she learned everything she knew about bartending from a bartender and everything about life and etc from Paul Augustus. <laughs> and I was like, that, isn't that perfect? That it's is, like, uh, yeah. it's exactly. So when you send them over there to his bar, they get a little land yap as well too. Exactly. Um, and then of course the French 75. I don't even know how many of those you sell on an annual basis, <laughs> but uh, considering the bar is named after it, and right. you also have a very special French 75. So we uh, do. tell us about that. We do. We, uh, we make it the way Count Arnaud uh, enjoyed it, obviously with Cognac. We have made more than any bar, but I'm uh, yeah I'm really really proud of uh, the research that I've done, and you know even Wander just helped me out along the way, you know just to you know to prove to the naysayers that it wasn't necessarily gin first, and that it's good both ways, but you know it's pretty special to, to uh, make sure we make it the same way it was made here before prohibition. Right. Well, one of the things that I love about Arno's and about Katie Kasbarian and her brother, your proprietors, are I think that I have such respect for them because, you know, a restaurant like this, it's like you have to maintain tradition but be relevant. And those two things are really hard. All right, I guess enough talking. <laughs> Let's try the Sazerac and the French 75. For yes. Thank you.